So I'm not used to having these uh, physical ones, so uh, I'm probably going to trip over it. So good morning, well, uh, afternoon. My name is Celia Lark, and I am working as a cybersecurity engineer for ABB. I am uh, very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, so many interesting ladies. Oh my God, topics, enthusiasm, I just love it. And it's so great to be here because when I um, originally started my journey in IT, I didn't really know that many other women in IT. So I think this is a great concept and it's good for us to finally have some role models. And um, yeah, great initiative, Patricia. So who am I? Um, first of all, I have a typo. I'm a perfectionist and I hate typos, go away. My name, uh, as you already know, is uh, Celia and I have a social profile as Cyber Celia. And the reason why I have that is because I really want to spread the enthusiasm for IT. Um, and there's just so much fun stuff in IT. Who doesn't use IT? I mean, I, for many years, trained uh, elderly in how to use computers. And that can be quite difficult, particularly because this uh, newfound, uh, what do I need a computer for? It's for the kids. It's uh, Everything was better before. Sometimes it was. But... You know, it's about finding something that they can enjoy. And then it's about finding that entry point that they can find value in IT. And you can bring that everywhere, really, in security and everything. You need an entry point so that IT is interesting to you. Because what you find really interesting is not always what I find really interesting, but we still like IT, both of us. So it's a huge subject. By the way, the answer with the elderly was often Google Street View. They loved viewing where they grew up or where they used to play as kids or where they used to live when they first got their kids. Or So yeah, if you need somebody uh, elderly in your family to get interested in IT, start with Google Street View. It's amazing. So it can be useful for everybody. Everybody has something that they like. And often when they like this Google Street View, they saw the value of uh, FaceTime and Skype. And there's always, you know, I, I hook them in. <laughs> it's uh, like the first, uh, the, it's an entry level drug, it's Google Street View. <laughs> so, uh, I was asked to talk about something that I was passionate about, and uh, how about uses and security? Yeah, how about it? <laughs> because uh, unfortunately, for all of these years, I have been working with users in some form or another for 20 years. And uh, it's been everything from training to making user manuals to journalism to testing of stuff. And unfortunately, very often, you have the, um, you have the PEBCA. You know, the problem exists between the com keyboard and chair, it's the user basically, and users are annoying, and, and, and many have this feeling that user support is, is easy, and they also think that it's an entry-level job. Sure, it is sometimes treated that way, but it shouldn't be, because users are the most important bit, especially in security, you all know this. They're called the weakest link, but they should be the strongest, and we can make them the strongest if we just have a bit of patience which you also get when you try to teach 90-year-olds how to use computers, by the way. Um, <laughs> so my uh, very grown-up reaction to you know, these concepts is... Um, mm. <laughs> so basically, the last time you called Indian support, uh, did you find it very helpful? Did you find it quick? Was it efficient? Was it worth your time? Um, um, you know. So support can be really, really important. And of course, your employees, well, the, your colleagues, they were employed to do some job too. And I'm sure their job description wasn't arguing with support for two hours today and two hours tomorrow. They have important stuff to do. So support really needs to be efficient and helpful. And so communication is very important. When you have a message that you want to convey, how can you convey it in a way that people understand you in the fastest possible way? Uh, don't just send them a user manual of 50 pages and say, you know, here's the user manual, read it. Uh, that won't, nobody will want to do that. If, if the um, travel agency, uh, you know, the finance office sent me a huge user manual when I had one question about some trip that I made and a taxi bill, I wouldn't be very happy with them. And I would probably click on everything on my screen just to see what 
could make it go through. And so they asked for it. <laughs> so you need to find um, a willingness to learn. And you also need to try to communicate your message in the easiest way so that everybody's happy. And since security threats are on the rise, we need to really think about how we communicate and how we train people in security. So uh, about communication, um, it might be, you might have a common system of symbol, signs or behavior, but it might not still go through. One example was, I've been working with document control previously, and we had a bunch of engineers who were supposed to learn how to upload documents into the system, how to reserve it so that they could work on it and nobody else could come in from the sideline and work on it. And we had, the system was brand new, so we got an expert from Poland over. And uh, immediately, his first sentence was, so in this repository, and I could just see all of the faces shutting off. I mean, the, the audience were engineers. They were smart. They know what a computer is. They can send an email. They can do lots of stuff. They can build stuff. But the word repository is not a word that they were used to seeing every day. And even after working with computers for many, many years, it wasn't the first word that I could think of either. So they understand English, you speak English, but it wasn't the mother tongue of either of you. And you use some jargon that people who are used to computers, they're still not used to it every day and they don't know every single jargon there is. So it went over their head. They didn't understand what repository was. So why use that word? Because it seems simple for him. I mean, that was his every day. So that was my point as well, that sometimes you have to take a step back and see, okay, who is your audience? What are you trying to communicate? And how would I feel if I were in their shoes? What do they know? How can I simplify it? And how can I actually get my message through in an easier language, for example, or by demonstrating it through some allegory, some story? Just how, how to get the thing through. Everybody speaks English, but it doesn't mean that we know the jargon. So, meaning. So communication, okay, from one partner to the other, from one part to the other, and then we have the meaning. Is the meaning getting through? I might say something and you might hear me, but you might not still come with the same result that I had. So it's actually the meaning we're trying to convey, not the message, and it's basically language that, some kind of language, but especially language. So you might not have the same background, you might not know the same terms and words, and you definitely might not have the same experience. So when I did my uh, master's um, on uh, security and um, user interfaces and how we can communicate this better, I, I had this uh, example screen and um, the uh, question during the questionnaire, people could come with comments on the on the screen and the interface. And one of the things that I heard quite a few times in the, in the comments, there was a free text field, was everybody knows this, and why not use the proper words because everybody knows them? No, they don't. If you go to my home and you ask my mom, uh, you know, what is malware? Can she answer? No. Does she need to be aware of malware? Yes. So we have a problem. <laughs> it's easy as that. No, not everybody knows. Everybody who works within security and everybody who's interested in security and, and so forth might know. But you know what? There's actually a whole world out there who does not work with computers. They use computers, but they're, they're nurses, they're, they're driving your bus, they're driving your tebana, they're driving, you know, they're cleaning our floors, they're fixing our coffee machine, and they use a computer every day, but they don't work with IT. And they also need to be aware of security. And so talk to them in a way they understand, explain to them in a way they understand, and use stories that they can relate to. So I would like to uh, show the Swiss cheese model, which is uh, excellent, and it can be used for almost anything, or Jarlsberg model, as we can call it here. So basically, the, um, the idea is that you can go through a lot of holes, but at some point you might meet an obstacle. This was a dent, but it's not a hole. So the, uh, the email that started here did not actually go through. So the IT department in your business might send 
out a warning email or instruction email, do this, don't do that, and so forth. So, you know, the, the recipient might get your email and they might read the words, they, it might be in English, they understand English, so far, so good. They might get the purpose of the message, purpose being something about IT security, some, something security, something computer or something. But they might not actually understand the terminology, again, malware or, you know, physical device, that could mean a computer mouse, it could mean a printer, they, they don't, you know, USB stick, they don't know. And they might also misinterpret the meaning. And I have a few examples of misinterpreted meanings. How far in detail should you go? And, you know, it, it depends on the audience, obviously, how you promote your message. But in many businesses, when you send an email to all employees, this includes people from cybersecurity to the people in reception, to the people who deal with the lighting and the water in the building. So your audience is huge. You need to reach all of them when it comes to security, because security is everywhere. So, how to get it across? You need to find the minste uh, felles multiplum, which is a great uh, expression. I'm not the best at math, but I do like that one. Least common denominator. Basically, something that everybody has in common. Something that they can think, oh yeah, that makes sense. And so that the meaning comes across even though you're an expert or if you're a novice or you're kind of getting into the security thing. So use allegories and use examples. And my favorite is about cooking receipts, for example. If you imagine Gordon Ramsay cooking a dinner um, and, you know, uh, Marius, who's 19, and he's invited the, his favorite uh, girl over and he's going to impress her with a nice dinner. And these, the master chef and the 19-year-old boy are both making this dish for the first time and following the same recipe. And it says salt. Uh-oh. <laughs> salt. Salt can be a lot of things. Is it kosher? You know, is it a uh, maldon salt? Is it uh, road salt because it gets really icy? Uh, is it, uh, is, you know, uh, sodium reduced salt? Is it, um, yeah, is it flaky? Is it regular table salt? Is it Himalayan salt? Does it have, you know, minerals from the food of Himalaya? Uh, there's a lot of salt. There's bath salts. You know, there's a whole lot of salts going on here. And I'm sure that, <laughs> I'm sure that Gordon Ramsay is not using exactly the same salt as uh, Marius. So, but then again, it, it doesn't matter because Gordon Ramsay knows there's all these kinds of salt, and I'm sure he has favorite black salt. Have you tasted the salt that's, you know, sm tastes like eggs? Yeah, it's from, uh, you get in, in Iceland and in Indian cooking, it's, there's a whole lot of salts going on. So I'm sure that Gordon Ramsay has a favorite, and he picks that because he knows. But for Marius, yeah, salt. Yeah, what do you mean, other kinds of salt? Salt is salt. We have it on the table, right? So my point being that, by simplifying it, you get your point across. Because Gordon knows that there's lots of different salts, and I'm sure he has a favorite, so he picks the one that he feels is most appropriate. Maybe he likes the pink color of the Himalayan salt, right? And the flavor. But our novice, he picks the salt that he knows, which is the only one he thinks about. So by simplifying the message, salt, you could pick the meaning that, well, the meaning came across, but you could pick what was suitable for you. So simplification doesn't mean stupefying. It means making it simple and people who know more, they know more. But the point here was just to actually put some salt in the food. And so the meaning came across to everybody, regardless of their entry level. So simplifying, it should be possible to explain the laws of physics to a barmaid or and, uh, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. So Albert Einstein said something of the sort. There's a lot of different quotes uh, attributed to him. Some he'd said, some he didn't. So something along long those lines, uh, we agreed, me and him, that <laughs> it's, uh, it's not a sign of you not knowing. It's a sign of you actually knowing quite a lot when you're able to see the main point and strip it down to the bare necessities. The salt example. So a lot of people seems that whenever I try to simplify something, there's always a lot of buts. Like, but you shouldn't forget, or uh, but what about that instance, or but yes, I know there's a lot of buts, buts all around. 
I, I don't like big butts, I, I can't deny. So there's a, you know, there's a whole lot of butts going on and I don't care because that wasn't the point. There's always more to tell about stuff. There's always a lot of stuff you can dig into. But the point is still the same. You need to get a meaning across and the easiest way to do it is to get people hooked, to get people interested, to see the main point. And if you have more to, to tell about it, then once you have them with you, that they understand what you mean, then you can continue the path into the buts. So um, it, the more difficult uh, something is, uh, the more you know about something, the more difficult it is for you to take a step back and realize that not everybody is at the same place that you are. Because you can't see the forest for the trees, right? You work with it all day long. It's hard to think that the person who just passed you in the street, they they do an amazing job as a nurse tendering to elderly that you know are soon to go to another happy place, hopefully. And they don't know much about IT, maybe. They could be experts, of course. I'm not saying that. But point being, not everybody works with computers. And it's very hard for us sometimes to step out and think that, they have a completely different world when they read the same sentence that you do. They have a different place they come from when they read it. So grasping the concept, uh, Alpaca is happy because he understands and he feels accomplished. Uh, Mastringsfølelse is number one. Uh, the feeling of accomplishment is very, very important. When you read something and you just, and you read and you read and you read and you feel stupid because you just don't get it, it's good to have a few stepping stones. You know, this is A, this is B, this is C. Okay, you get it, then we can go to D and E and F. You need to have an entrance point and willingness to learn. If you want to learn something, that is very, very good motivation. If you actually don't want to learn something because it seems very boring or it seems very difficult, that's not a good entry point. So make it fun so that people want to learn. And um, believe it or not, no, not everybody is as interested as, as you are in this topic. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to, uh, hard to understand sometimes because it's so exciting, but it's just the way it is. And also remember that the audience is not dumb just because they don't understand it. They just don't have that interest that you have, and they maybe they haven't realized it yet. You know, like the elderly who didn't know about Google Street View yet. What? Can you do that? That is amazing. Yeah, I told you. So, you know, so they're not dumb. They understand that it's simplified. When I say that, here the other day, I said that defragmentation is like when you pick up all the toys on the floor and you put them in a toy box. You know, a lot of people at my workplace, ah, oh, that makes sense. So you gather stuff and you put it together and it takes up, uh, yeah, I get that. And then there was a lot of buts. Yeah, yeah, I know there's a lot of buts, but these people don't actually, they're not gonna do it. They're not gonna work with defermentation, but they needed to understand the concept. And they're not dumb. They understand that something on the computer is not exactly the same as cleaning up Legos. They, they, they know they're, it's not the same. So, so don't, don't uh, think that people, you know, don't make them dumber than they are. If they want to know more, they will ask me, what exactly, is there anything more, and, but how about, you know. So start small and, and build up. And why is clarity so important? Uh, I need to hurry up, uh, my time is going out. So ownership, because when you feel like part of something, you care more about it. And as we know, security is everywhere. It's from holding the door open to people because you're being kind and they didn't, you didn't see their entry card, but you, you held it open. So everyone from the front desk to the coffee maker person to the programmer, everybody has a role in security. And we need to make them all feel like that. Often people who don't work with IT don't think that they have anything to do with security, but of course they do. What about social engineering coming in through the, you know, there's, there's so many examples of this in, in crime, for example, crime novels. Um, so, and, and also we have leaders that just give a little bit of money to you know, some security stuff, and the geeks are gonna handle that, but you need continuous money flowing to train the users, to in update patches, to get new equipment, to, you know, there's, if they understand what the money goes to, they will also hopefully give you more resources, more people to, to help, and also more money. And it's like recycling. When everybody does a little bit, it helps tremendously. So that's why it's important to, to do that. Um, some examples, USB sticks. Most people now know that you shouldn't just put a USB stick into a computer because that's bad. But 
they think that antivirus fixes everything because, uh, yeah, they've been told that, you know, oh, it scans everything that comes through. But what about the uh, exploding USB sticks? There are those as well. You put a USB stick in and the computer goes boom. So too late for antivirus then, right? So there's a lot of example uh, in that case uh, and uh, passwords and so forth. So many rules, so many old rules. So yeah, get, get the main points across and then people can read more if they're interested. And my time is up, so I will uh, mention uh, KISS, which I made uh, PG. And uh, <laughs> remember to uh, be uh, skeptical and use allegories that people can understand and feel like a part of. And don't be deterred by whenever you simplify something that they say, oh, that's too simple. No, it's not. It's OK, because people understand that it's made simple. They understand that they can ask and dig and Google for more information if they want. So just because it's simple doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means that it's a truth with modification. And people understand that it's not the pure truth. So that was what I had time for. Thank you. Thank you.